Dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining the second day of our online summit, 5G Summit. Yesterday, we started our event with exciting speakers from various professions and backgrounds, such as science, public service, and industrial field, and one manufacturer of 5G technology from Korea. If you missed it, you will receive the link afterwards for both days to rewatch the event anytime. For everybody who joined today, this event is hosted by the European headquarter of Kuchla, and it's my pleasure to be your host and moderator throughout this event. My name is Philip Sokolowski, and I work in our marketing team here at Frankfurt. Our marketing team is responsible for organizing events like this, offline and online, B2B matchmaking between Korean and German companies is our main purpose, and therefore we are supporting to find business partners in the German market. Let's start our event and let me give you a brief introduction to today's great speakers and program. First topic will be covered by Mr. Ki sang -ho, who is director by the infrastructure department of the Korean Telecom, or in short, KT, and will give us an insight about the current Korean 5G market and tell us also about his experiences of launching their 5G network service back in 2019. One side note, this presentation will be held in Korean, but I will show you how to select the English translation in a few minutes, visually in the shown presentation. Next up, Professor Dr. Jong Kwan Lee of the Electronics and Telecommunications Research Institute in Korea, or in short, KTE. Mr. Lee will speak of future technologies which are under development in Korea right now. Following, we have prepared a special program for you. A discussion round with German specialists such as Professor Doctor of Engineering, Dr. Frank H. P. Fitze, and Engineer Carsten Pino, and Korean specialist, Mr. Ki sang -ok. And also Professor Dr. John Han Lee, and yesterday's speaker, Mr. Michael Popkowski. Before we officially start our program, a few technical and organizational points from our side. Throughout the whole webinar, you will be on mute and your video will be not shown. Of course, you always have the opportunity to share your questions in our question and a in our Q and A box or in our chat box below. The questions will be answered after the webinar and sent to you. Today, I am happy to introduce to you our interpreter, Mrs. Hyun Yong Hong. She will translate the original tone to either Korean or English, depending on the used language of the speaker. Please note on the shown presentation how to change the language channel, both Korean or English. Please adapt the audio accordingly to your needs. The webinar will be recorded and the link to rewatch this event will be sent to you afterwards. Also alongside the information documents provided by our speakers, so you will be able to share this with your colleagues. More about the following steps later. If you face any technical issues or problems, please feel free to send a message to Mrs. Leah Weber directly. So, first off, we are pleased to welcome Mr. Ki sang -ho. Mr. Ho joined KT in 1997 as a researcher in the network lab and has been working on various network design and management research, such as LPE, 5G, OSS, MMS, orchestration, and so on. Since 2017, he has been leading the development project for virtualized 5G core network and orchestration technologies, and now he's taken to the role leading the development of E2E orchestration for 5G networks and NBC and KT. Good evening, Mr. Oak. It's nice to have you here. We are very thankful you could join us on our 5G summit. You may now start your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, my name is Yi Sang Oak. I will start my presentation. Uh, <clears throat> I'm the KT R&D Group. I'm the KT R&D Group. 스테이터스하고 그 다음에 5G의 핵심 기술인 네트워크 슬라이싱에 대해서 어, 말씀드리겠습니다. 크게 어, 토픽은 두 가지로 어, 말씀드리겠습니다. 첫 번째 어, KT의 5G 상태를 일반 개인을 위한 서비스 상태에 대해서 말씀드리고 
그 다음에 두 번째로 엔터프라이즈, B2B 비즈니스 마켓을 위한 네트워크 슬라이스 해당에 대해서 말씀드리겠습니다. Das sage ich bitte nicht nochmal, Tatsin, sag ich dir. KT는 2018년 평창 올림픽에서 세계 최초로 이제 5G 트라이얼, 필드 트라이얼 서비스를 했습니다. 그리고 2018년 12월 달에 어, 최초로 5G 어, 라디오 어, 시그널을 전송했고요. 어, 그런 다음에 최초로 나온 그 5G 모바일 핫스팟, 즉 5G 모뎀을 이용해서 어, 가입한 그 KT 최초 가입자, 퍼스트 가입자는 사람이 아니라 모바일 디바, 어, IoT 디바이스입니다. 첫 번째 어, KT 5G 서비스의 가입자는 한국에서 롯데타워라고 하는 가장 높은 건물 어, 꼭대기층에서 건물을 안내하는 노타라고 하는 어, 강 안내 서비스하는 어, 로봇입니다. 다음에 두 번째 어, KT5G를 가입한 어, 사용자 역시 사람이 아니라 인터넷으로 커피를 주문하면 은 자동으로 커피를 만들어주는 바리스타 머신인 비트가 이제 두 번째 가입자였습니다. 그리고 스마트폰을 이용해서 최초의 이제 사용자 고객은 2019년 4월 달에 출시를 했습니다. 어, KTS 이제 5G 네트워크에 대한 디플로이 어, 로드맵이 되겠습니다. 2018년 초기에는 어, KT가 5G를 구축할 때 한국에 있는 6개의 강역 도시 이들을 중심으로 해서 서울, 부산, 대전과 같은 여섯 개 강력 동시를 중심으로 하고 그리고 거기를 있는 고속도로 그리고 주요 도로들을 중심으로 무슨 방을 구축했습니다. 그리고 2020년 현재 기준에는 어, 전국에 있는 주요 어, 카바리지로 다 확장을 하고 있고요. 어, 한국에서 5G 주파수 대역은 3.5GHz와 2.8GHz 두, 두 가지로 구분하고, 구분되어 있는데 이제 서비스 하고 있는 부분 3.5 기가 헤르츠입니다. 3.5 기가 헤르츠를 기반으로 하는 주요 도시의 5G 확장은 완료된 상태입니다. 그리고 이제 향후에 향후에는 어, 중심 지역이 아니라 장관이나 섬 같은 외곽 지대에 확장을 하고 그리고 일부 어, 하스파 지역에 28 기가 헤르츠의 어, 5G 기준 하는 것을 대하고 있습니다. 네. 이거 현재 상태를 이 박사님 목소리가 자꾸 들리네요. 어, 현재는 약 9만 개의 라디오 장비가 어, 중국적으로 설치가 되어 있습니다. 그 중에서 약 4만 5천 개 정도가 어, 5교의 건물 바깥에 있는 기지국이 되고요. 나머지 절반 정도가 빌딩이나 어, 사무실 안에 있는 인도어 라디오 기지국이 되겠습니다. 기지국 장비들은 어, 크게 세 종류인데요. 삼성 그리고 에릭슨 LG, 로키아, 세 개의 어, 라디오 장비, 어, 밴더로 구축이 되어 있고요. 5G 코아 장비는 삼성과 키스코, 두 개의 밴더로 되어 있습니다. 어, 현재 한국에서는 조금 옛날 데이터인데요. 어, 9월 말 기준으로 5G 사용자 수는 900만을 넘었습니다. 어, 이는 전체 한국의 모바일 어, 사용자 수가 약 7천만 명 정도가 되고요. 그게 한 13% 정도 해당되는 비율입니다. 현재 어, KT는 9월 말 기준으로 약 어, 2,400만 명 정도의 5G 사용자가 있습니다. 전체 사용자 수 중에서 5G 사용자 비율은 약 3%인데 어, 5G는 주로 초기에 5G를 사용한 사람들은 어, 트래픽을 많이 사용하는 헤비 유저 그리 5G에 가입을 했기 때문에 전체 네트워크에서 트래픽 비중은 
48% 정도가 되는 상태입니다. 그리고 이제 최근에는 이런 헤비 유저들에 대한 가입이 어느 정도 세츄레이션 되어 있어서 어, 사용자의 증가는 약간 어, 증가율은 약간 주춤한 상태입니다. 그리고 이제 5G를 출시하면서 다양한 디바이스 어, 단말들이 이제 필요하고 이런 부분을 어, 한국에 있는 대표적인 스마트폰 제조업사인 삼성, 어, 삼성의 갤럭시 시리즈 그리고 LG의 어, V 시리즈를 통해서 어, 단말들을 이제 출시를 했습니다. 그래서 최, 최초의 그 5G 단말은 어, 앞쪽에서 말씀드린 것처럼 아, 화면 화면 동이 화면 안 되셨어요? 아 그러셨나 봐요. 팀장님 화면 안 하셨나 봐요. 여보세요? 아 sorry. Can you see the uh, presentation file? Yes, we can see it now. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I miss it. So I didn't share my presentation slide. So Okay, can I go next? Yes, sure, continue. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, uh, as you show in your slide, so, uh, 최초의 uh, 5G 단말은 uh, 스마트폰이 아니라 5G 모뎀인 uh, 모바일 핫스팟 uh, 5G 디바이스를 만들었고요. 이 디바이스를 기반으로 해서 앞쪽에 말씀드린 다양한 IoT 장비들하고 연결해서 5G 서비스를 초기에 제공했습니다. 그리고 이제 스마트폰 갤럭시, LG에 있는 SQ, 갤럭시 노트, 그리고 최근에 출시된 갤럭시 폴 이런 서비스들이 이제 출시가 되고 있고요. 아마도 이번 달 말에 아시겠지만 애플의 아이폰 12가 유지 될 거로 알고 있습니다. 그리고 이런 어, 스마트폰 외에도 어, USB 인터페이스를 가진 5G 모뎀이 이제 출시가 되었고요. 그리고 디바이스 안에 어, PCI 인터페이스를 가지고 이들에 탑재될 수 있는 어, 부분들도 공개됐습니다. Uh, can you see the slide? Um, no, I think you accidentally stopped it. Um, you would need to press on the green button and share your screen once more. Hmm? Oh, my. 메시지가 좀 뜨면서 이상한데 이게 왜 이렇게 되고 있죠? 아 보이시나요? Can you see the slide? Yes, we can see it again. Thank you very much. So, ah, uh, it seems there are some problem. So, yeah, I will go next. 5G 서비스를 하면서 가장 중요한 것이 이제 앞쪽에 있는 커버리지, 그 다음은 5G 디바이스, 그 다음에 중요한 게 이제 5G를 통해 제공하는 서비스가 되겠습니다. KT는 다양한 종류의 개인 고객을 위해서 다양한 종류의 미디어 서비스를 준비를 해서 출시를 했습니다. 가장 대표적인 게 나를이라고 하는 서비스인데요. 이거는 이제 아바타 를 등록을 하고 이 나를이란 서비스를 통해서 음성, 하사, 메신저와 같은 다양한 서비스를 이제 할수 있는 서비스가 되겠습니다. 그리고 또 하나가 이제 리얼 360에서 360도 VR 커뮤니케이션을 할수 있습니다. 이렇게 보시는 헤드 마운트 디스플레이를 탑재하고 거기에 스마트폰을 켜고 리얼 서비스를 하게 되면 은 360도 VR 서비스를 보실 수 있습니다. 이걸 통해서 다양한 어, 공연이나 이런 부분을 볼수 있고요. 그 다음에 어, 고해상도의 그 e스포츠 게이밍 스트리밍도 가능하고요. 그 다음에 스포츠 같은 경우에는 
다양한 앵글의 카메라들을 두고 멀티 앵글을 가지는 그런 이제 스포츠 중계 서비스도 있고 음악이나 공연 같은 거를 실시간으로 서로 공유할 수 있는 것 그리고 무제한 음악을 들을 수 있는 부분 그리고 KTS 제공하는 IPTV 서비스와 결합해서 실시간으로 라이브 TV를 할수 있는 이런 다양한 종류의 미디어 딜리버리 서비스를 준비해서 출시를 하고 있습니다. 어, 전체적으로 보면 은 어, LTE에 비해서 LTE가 9.7기가 한 달에 사용하는 사용자별 사용자 9.7기가바이트고요. 이게 5G로 넘어오면서 한 2.5배 정도가 증가했습니다. 그리고 어, KTS 제공하는 5G 어, 어, 상품은 크게 네 가지로 구분할 수 있습니다. 기본적인 이제 슈퍼 플랜은 데이터 요금을 무제한으로 사용할 수 있습니다. 그래서 가장 기본인 슈퍼 플랜 베이직은 무제한으로 사용할 수 있고요. 해외 데이터 로밍만 100kbps 이하로 제한을 하고 있습니다. 그래서 이런 부분이 한 5만 원, 월 5만 원 정도의 상품이고 그 위에 이제 슈퍼 플랜 스페셜이 있습니다. 이런 부분은 이제 스마트폰 외에 자기가 쓰는 스마트폰 외에 다른 스마트폰이나 IoT 디바이스 같은 것을 추가를 할수 있습니다. 그래서 데이터 사용량을 공유할 수 있는 구조고요. 그 다음에 슈퍼 플랜 프리미엄은 데이터 로밍도 3메가까지 가능한 그런 무제한 상품이 되겠습니다. 그리고 가장 적은 이제 저렴한 상품이 슈퍼 플랜 슬림. 그래서 한 달에 8기가까지 쓰고 8기가 다 쓰면은 이제 속도를 1메가 BPS까지 제한하는 그런 상품이 되겠습니다. 최근에는 이제 이런 헤비 유저 상품 고객들이 이제 어느 정도 다 5G로 전환해 왔기 때문에 비교적 사용량이 적은 고객들이 5G로 승인할 수 있도록 다양한 그 저렴한 라이트 상품들을 이제 라인업해서 출시하고 있습니다. 그 5G 초기에는 주로 말씀드린 개인 늘 대상으로 해서 미디어 딜리버리 서비스에 중점을 뒀고요. 그래서 이제 어 기존에 5G가 그 특성이 훨씬 더 빠르고 더 전송 지연이 짧고 그다음 더 많은 디바이스를 연결하는 부분이 이제 5G의 특성입니다. 그래서 이를 이제 향후에는 어좀 집중하고 있는 부분들이 바로 이제 개인이 아니라 B2B 엔터프라이즈 시장이 되겠습니다. 그래서 엔터프라이즈 시장을 어, 해주기 위해서 지금 다양한 어, 인더스트리 분야와 협업을 하고 있습니다. 그래서 자동차 V2X를 하기 위해서 현대 자동차 그룹과 같이 어, 자동차에 탑재될 5G 모뎀에 대한 테스팅들을 하고 있고요. 그 다음에 어, 물류를 하는 아마존 이런 물류의 회사들을 위해서 이제 하는 서비스들 그리고 이제 공장의 제어를 자동화할 수 있도록 어, 팩토리의 스마트화 시키는 일단 이런 부분들을 이제 어, 타겟에서 각각의 세그먼트마다 거기에 맞는 어, 5G 네트워크 서비스를 제공하는 것을 목표로 하고 있습니다. 그래서 이제 지금까지는 그 5, KT의 5G 상태를 말씀드렸는데 주로 개인 고객 이게 어, 상대로 하는 서비스 상태를 말씀드렸고요. 이제 앞으로는 어, 다음부터 이 슬라이드부터는 그런 어, 개인 고객이 아니라 엔터프라이즈 커스터머, 엔터프라이즈 커스터머를 위한 어, 5G 프라이빗 네트워크에 대한 어, 계획에서 제공하는 그 서비스 현황들에 대해서 간단히 어, 말씀드리겠습니다. 어, 왼쪽에 보시는 것처럼 어, 기존 5G 이전에 LTE 같은 경우에는 주로 어, 5G에 대한 인프라를 다양한 유스 케이스, 인더스트리에 대한 니즈와 관계없이 동일하게 공유하는 그런 구조였습니다. 그래서 이렇게 공유를 하다 보니까 각 인더스트리별로 원하는 퀄리티 오브 서비스 혹은 시큐리티 서비스를 제공하는 데 이제 한계가 있습니다. 그래서 이런 부분들을 이제 5G에서는 각 유스 케이스에 맞도록 속도나 전송 지연, 동시에 연결할 수 있는 디바이스 수 이런 부분을 이제 다양하게 할수 있는 데디케이트된 프라이빗 네트워크를 제공하려고 하고 있습니다. 그리고 각각 유스 케이스에 맞는 QS나 시큐리티를 이제 제공하는 걸 목표로 하고 있고요. 어, 잘 아시겠지만 어, 기존에 어, 아무도 다 아, 독일도 비슷하다고 알고 있는데요. LTE에서도 프라이빗 네트워크를 어, 엔터프라이즈에 제공을 했습니다. 
어, 그는 이제 구조가 왼쪽에 어, 5GS도 가능하고 LTS도 가능한 구조입니다. 기본적으로는 어, 기주국에 있는 레디오는 서로 공유를 하고 어, 기주국으로부터 어, LT 쪽 코어는 어, 별도의 분리된 코어를 제공해 주다. 그런 방식으로 어, 서비스를 하고 있었고 KT는 LT 때부터 어, 시작해서 엔터프라이즈 위한 프라이빗 LT 서비스를 2017년부터 지행하고 있습니다. 근데 이런 부분들이 이제 LT 일부 5G에서도 가능하고 실제 5G에서 되면은 이런 개념들을 좀더 어, 유연하게 제공하기 위해서 5G 의 핵심 개념이 바로 5G 네트워크 슬라이싱입니다. 그래서 왼쪽에 보시는 것보다 좀더 어, QS나 혹은 어, 접근할 수 있는 부분에서 차별화를 둘수 있고요. 어, 다, 다양한 인더스트리에 맞는 어, 퀄리티나 시큐리티를 보장할 수 있습니다. 이런 부분들을 이제 제공하는 부분이 그 5G 슬라이스가 되겠습니다. 그래서 5G 슬라이스의 개념은 음, 아마도 아실 거라고 생각됩니다. 5G 슬라이스는 어, 지금 5G를 에 대한 표준을 드라이브하고 있는 3G PPS는 아, 보시는 것처럼 정의를 하고 있습니다. 하나의 논리적인 네트워크인데요. 여기는 아, 지정된 네트워크의 케이퍼빌리티와 캐리터리스틱을 제공합니다. 그런데 그런 네트워크가 적어도 하나의 코어 네트워크와 아, 컨트롤 네트워크와 유저 플레인 그리고 억세스 네트워크를 가지고 있는 그런 독립된 아, 네트워크를 이제 5G 네트워크 슬라이싱이라고 부르고 있고요. ITF에서는 좀더 확장된 개념으로 디파인을 하고 있습니다. 엔터프라이즈의 인더스트리에 특정한 니즈를 만족할 수 있는 그런 인프라 스트럭처를 이제 그 집합을 네트워크 슬라이스라고 부르고 있습니다. 이런 네트워크 슬라이스에 대해서 표준에서 이야기하고 있는 부분을 잠깐 말씀을 드리면 은 이런 슬라이스를 구분하기 위해서 어, 슬라이스는 크게 세 종류로 지금 정의를 하고 있습니다. EMBB와 URLLC, MMTC. EMBB는 Enhanced Mobile Broadband, 고속의 어, 속도를 제공하는 네트워크 슬라이스가 되겠고요. URLLC는 Ultra Reliable Low Latency Network이 되겠습니다. 그래서 아주 저지연의 전송을 주면서 끊어지지 않는 고실내 네트워크가 되겠습니다. 그리고 MMTC는 Massive Machine Type Communication. 그래서 다양한 I, IoT 장비들이 어, 수십, 수만 개에서 수천 개까지 붙을 수 있는 그런 슬라이스가 되겠습니다. 그래서 크게 보면 은 표준에서는 세 종류의 슬라이스를 구분하고 있고 이런 부분을 아이덴티파이 하는 부분이 이제 SST와 SD라고 하는 어, ID를 통해서 구분을 할 수가 있습니다. 그래서 대표적으로 보면 은 이제 어, EMBB의 SST로 EMBB의 슬라이스 타입을 정의할 수 있고요. 거기에 서비스 디프레이션은 일반 개인을 주는 메스로 할 거냐 아니면 기업, 엔터프라이즈 커스터머를 위한 엔터프라이즈로 할 거냐 이런 식으로 구분해서 슬라이스의 종류들을 구분해서 제공할 수 있습니다. 그리고 또 하나가 이제 슬라이스 타입을 URLLC에서 거기는 커넥티드 카를 위한 그런 형태 그리고 또 하나는 MMTC라고 해서 IoT 장비 그 대표적인 게 이제 메디칼 IoT 여러 가지 어, 체온이나 맥박 이런 걸 측정할 수 있는 IoT 장비들을 어, 접속할 수 있는 그래서 이런 MMTC는 어, 디바이스별로 필요한 어, 데이터의 대역폭은 짧지만 접속할 수 있는 어, 디바이스의 숫자가 되게 많은 게 특성이 되겠습니다. 그래서 이런 어, 다양한 니저들을 어, 슬라이스라고 하는 그래서 슬라이스 타입 그리고 슬라이스 디프렌시에이터를 이용해서 어, 각각의 슬라이스를 식별하고 해당되는 5G 단말에서는 어, 접근할 수 있는 권한이 있다고 하면 각 슬라이스를 접근해서 그 슬라이스에서 제공하는 어, 캐릭터리스틱과 케이퍼빌리티를 어, 사용하실 수가 있습니다. 이런 부분이 이제 표준에서 정의하고 있는 부분이고요. 어, 어, 본 슬라이드는 KT에서 엔터프라이즈 커스터머를 위해 제공하고 있는 서비스의 컨셉이 되겠습니다. 5G는 단순히 빠른 모바일 커넥티비티만을 주는 게 아니라 결국은 그 엔터프라이즈에 있는 여기 보는 불찾기나 
뭐 다양한 센서들이 이제 제어를 하고 모니터링을 하기 위해서는 결국은 그 엔터프라이저에 있는 그 데이터 센터까지 연결이 돼야 됩니다. 그래서 그렇게 해주기 위해서는 5G 라디오, 5G 코어 그리고 그 서버들을 수용해 줄수 있는 MEC, 로컬 멀티 억세스 엣지 클라우드 같은 어, 그런 클라우드가 필요하고요. 그리고 필요하면은 기업에 있는 IDC와 연결할 수 있는 리스트 라인까지 어, 유선과 무선을 통합적으로 제공해 주는 서비스가 필요합니다. 그래서 KT에서 제공하는 네트워크 슬라이스에서는 어, 앞쪽에 말씀드린 5G를 포함한 와이어리스 그리고 기존의 어, 리스트 라인을 포함한 와이어드 어, 네트워크를 한꺼번에 주는 유니파이드 네트워크가 되겠습니다. 그리고 어, 와이어리스와 와이어의 전체적인 엔드투엔드 딜레이, 엔드투엔드 밴드위스를 보장해주는 이제 그런 서비스가 하나의 특성이고요. 또 하나가 단순히 네트워크 커넥티비티 뿐만 아니라 어, 클라우드 혹은 IDC와 결합해서 IT 서비스까지도 같이 제공을 합니다. 그리고 각각의 서비스에 따라서 라우팅 패스도 다르게 하는 그런 서비스를 제공하고 있고요. 또 다른 하나의 특성이 이런 모든 어, 네트워크 슬라이스에 대한 부분을 고객은 어, 매니지드 하는 그 부담을 가질 필요 없고 KT에서 전체적인 매니지드 서비스를 제공하고 있습니다. 아, 이런 부분이 KT가 5G에서 엔터프라이저를 위해 제공하는 네트워크 슬라이스의 기본적인 컨셉이 되겠습니다. 아, 좀더 어, 들어가서 말씀을 드리면 은 그러면 은 앞쪽에 말씀드린 그런 네트워크 슬라이스의 다양한 피처 어, 고속, 저지연 을 어떻게 제공하느냐 어, 각 구간 네트워크의 각 구간별로 어떤 주요 기술들을 쓰고 있는지를 간단하게 말씀드리겠습니다. 어, 첫 번째로는 단말 같은 경우에는 단말의 어, 클라이언트 애, 애플리케이션을 제공합니다. 그래서 그 앱을 통해서 애플리케이션을 통해서 각 어, 구동되는 어, 모바일 폰에서 구동되는 애플리케이션 따라서 어떤 슬라이스를 탈 건지를 선택을 할수 있는 어, 앱이 솔루션이 어, 유저 사이, 유저 단말 사이드에 제공이 되고요. 그리고 이렇게 이제 되면 레디오에서는 두 가지 피처를 제공합니다. 레디오의 자원을 할당할 때 우선 순위가 있습니다. 그 부분이 이제 파이브 QI라고 하는 피, 어, 필드가 있고요. 파이브 QI를 통해서 각각에 있는 자원을 레디오 자원을 할당해 주는 프라이어리티를 조정할 수 있습니다. 그래서 고속이나 저지연을 하면은 그런 슬라이스에는 레디오 자원을 우선적으로 할당해 주는 이제 그런 디프렌시 되는 서비스를 제공할 수 있고요. 또 다른 하나 부분이 주파수 대역 800메가 헤르츠 대역이라고 하면 은그 중에서 특정 대역을 특정 슬라이스에 지정을 해줄 수 있습니다. 이런 부분은 현재 앞쪽에서 말씀드린 KT에서는 5G 주파수 대역이 3.5기가 헤르츠와 28기가 헤르츠가 있는데 28기가 헤르츠에서 이런 데디케이트 레디오 프리퀀시를 제공해 주는 부분을 어, 하고 있습니다. 그래서 이런 어, 레디오의 자원을 독점적으로 슬라이스에 할당하거나 혹은 어, 레디오의 자원을 할당할 때 우선순위를 제공하는 방식으로 해서 슬라이스에 차별을 제공하고 있습니다. 또 하나가 이제 코아 부분입니다. 코아는 기존에 있는 어, 일반 어, 개인들이 쓰는 퍼블릭 코아와는 분리된 엔터프라이저 전용의 데디케이트 된 5G 코아 를 제공을 하고 있습니다. 그리고 이 5G 코아가 어, 통신사업자에 있는 그 엣지에 있는 게 아니라 고객의 프레미스 안쪽으로 어, 위치하는 온 프레미시스에서도 어, 어, 제공을 해서 전체적인 전송 구간을 단축시키고 어, 바로 로컬 브레이크 아웃하는 그런 행태로 해서 저지연 서비스를 제공하고 있습니다. 그리고 MEC로부터 엔터프라이즈 IDC까지는 어, 리스트 라인을 제공해서 거기에 따른 대역폭을 보장하는 형태로 그래서 전체적인 서비스의 어, 차별화를 진행을 하고 있습니다. 그래서 이런 어, 엔터프라이즈를 위한 서비스들이 이제 진행하고 있고요. 어, 한국에서 KT가 대표적으로 하고 있는 부분이 조선소입니다. 10야드라고 하는 엄청나게 큰 대규모의 이제 공장 부지가 있고 여기에 다양한 5G가 있고 디바이스들이 있습니다. 그래서 이런 부분에 있는 다양한 디바이스들을 
5G, 5G 네트워크를 제공하고 있고요. 그렇게 해서 전체적으로 실제 어, 조선소에 있는 실제적인 인프라에 대한 정보들을 다 가져와서 디지털 트윈화하고 정보들을 정확히 모니터링하고 각각의 피치에 따라서 저지연, 고속, 리라이어블한 그런 네트워크 슬라이스를 이제 제공을 하고 있습니다. 이제 이런 부분이 하나 유수 케이스가 되겠고요. 이런 행태의 다양한 그 엔터프라이즈에 맞는 네트워크 슬라이스를 제공하기 위해서 이런 부분들을 기존처럼 제공하는 어, 매뉴얼로 제공하는 데 문제가 있기 때문에 이런 부분들을 이제 자동화 시킨 부분이 되겠습니다. 그래서 이런 엔터프라이즈의 다양한 슬라이스를 필요할 때 온디맨드로 제공해 주기 위해서 저희는 그 오케스트레이트라고 부르고 하는 그 슬라이스를 프로비저닝 앤 매니지먼트 하는 제어 플랫폼을 개발해서 이제 서비스에 제공을 하고 있습니다. 그 구조를 간단하게 말씀드리면 은 현재 엔터프라이즈 고객이 5G 슬라이스를 쓰러 가면 은 포탈에 들어와서 서비스를 청약할 수 있습니다. 그러면 은 청약된 내용을 기반으로 해서 전체적으로 어떤 에지 클라우드의 5G 코어를 구성할 거고 그리고 모바일 라디오 구간의 주파수나 QS는 어떻게 설정할 것이며 그리고 기업이 쓰고 있는 IDC 센터가 있다면 은 ID 센터까지 리스 라인은 어떻게 구성할 것인지에 대한 디자인을 하고요. 디자인 결과들을 기반으로 해서 각각에 있는 시스템들과 연동을 통해서 프로비저닝이 자동으로 일어나고 자동으로 구성되고 나면 은 여기에 대한 엔드 투 엔드 테스팅을 완료해서 서비스를 온 디맨드로 제공을 할 수가 있습니다. 이런 부분들이 이제 5G의 B2B의 서비스를 하기 위해서는 핵심적인 어, 플랫폼 중의 요소라고 생각을 하고 있습니다. 이제 향후에는 저희가 이런 부분들이 이제 포탈에서 들어오는 게 아니라 다양한 인더스트리가 있고요. 인더스트리에 있는 엔터프라이즈는 자기 고유의 플랫폼이 있습니다. 그래서 플랫폼과 앞쪽에 말씀드린 어, 오케스트레이터와 어, 오픈 API를 통해서 연동을 합니다. 그래서 인더스트리에 있는 플랫폼이 어, 필요한 슬라이스들은 필요할 때마다 바로바로 바로 KT에 있는 5G 에저 플랫폼, 에코 시스템과 연계를 통해서 필요한 서비스들을 바로바로 바로 생성해서 쓰고 필요 없을 때는 서비스를 해제하는 그런 이제 상태로 가려고 저희는 하고 있습니다. 어, 마지막 슬라이드가 되겠습니다. 어, 전체적으로 KT의 5G 상태를 말씀드리면 은 일반 개인을 위한 서비스들은 어느 정도 충분히 이제 서비스를 하고 있고요. 어, 엔터프라이즈 앞쪽에 2부에서 말씀드린 엔터프라이즈는 어, 생각보다는 모든 사람들이 5G가 되면 은 B2B의 버티컬 어, 마켓이 엄청나게 증가할 거라고 생각하고 있지만 실제 현재까지는 그렇게 크게 B2B와 결합되는 그런 서비스들이 실제적으로는 제공되고 있지는 않습니다. 그래서 이런 부분들을 잘하기 위해서는 다양한 그 B2B의 그 인더스트리와 협업을 통해서 여러 가지 그 성공 사례, 유스 케이스에 대한 성공 사례 이런 부분들이 개발이 필요하고 이런 부분을 하기 위해서는 인더스트리와 좀더 어, 많은 협업이 필요할 거라고 생각을 하고 있습니다. 아, 이상으로 어, 제가 현재까지 진행된 KT의 5G 상태에 대해서 말씀을 드렸습니다. 이상으로 제 발표는 마치겠습니다. 
as a selection leader of wireless transmission research in E3 region of Korea, and now vice chair of ecosystem strategy committee of 5G Forum Korea. His current research activities are in digital and wireless communication system, in particular for physical layer issues, and in wave based transmission moving hotspot network. Hello, Mr. Lee. It's great to have you here today. You're free to start your presentation now. Thank you. Can you see the slide? Yes, perfectly. Thank you very much. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Junan Lee from Etri. Uh, it's a great pleasure to give my talk today. Today, my talk will be about R&D activities in Etri. I'm not a professor. I'm a, a researcher in Etri. So before starting my talk, I'd like to briefly introduce you to Etri. Etri is a government-supported research institute in Korea. More than uh, 2,000 people are working there, covering the research topics like AI, wireless mobile communication, human body communication, satellite communication, RF device, and so on. Simply saying, we are uh, performing most of the communication related researches and its impact has, has have been very significant to our society so far. Okay, this is the uh, brief introduction to Ed3. So I'm going to jump into my uh, talk. My talk is about technologies in 5G era and beyond. So as I mentioned, my uh, presentation mostly uh, involved with the technology issues. So here is the outline of my uh, presentation. First, so uh, for 5G, uh, you can see the vision and requirement when you refer to the uh, IMT 2020 document, which was approved in ITUR Working Party 5D. So as you are seeing this slide, uh, there are three representative UC scenarios here. Uh, the first one is enhanced uh, mobile broadband, and second one is massive IoT, and third one is low latency. So actually, 5G was driven by services, not like previous generations. So if you move to the right hand, you can find out uh, KPIs, key performance indicators here, eight key performance indicators. Those, you know, keep key performance indicates are grouped into three categories uh, considering uh, uh, three uh, different uh, UC scenarios. And regarding uh, specification, we call NR, which is stand for 5G new radio, which is uh, being uh, performing in uh, 3GPP right now. So, so far, uh, release 16 uh, has been approved this year. So now release 17, uh, is underway in 3GP right now. So here, the, we're, we have a vision uh, to be a, a world best partner for mobile communication. That's why we're doing some uh, global collaborative research with UE, uh, EU and UK and Japan, China and so forth. And as a research center, research institute, we have a mission R&D for solving a social and public problem and R&D for real com uh, commercialization for small and uh, medium-sized company, I mean SMEs, and R&D for future technology. Okay, let me uh, go into the technology. So those technology uh, uh, we have been uh, doing so far, the first one is five small cell. 
So when you see the figure in the left side at the center, open ID run, it stands for uh, intelligence defined RAN solution for 5G small cell. So technology here, we are developing 5G small cell software. Okay, let me move. Because there is a screen on the slide, so I cannot see. Okay. So as I mentioned, we are uh, focusing on the uh, 5G small cell software design. So those designs will be based on release 15 and 16 uh, in 3GPP. Those are all NR based specification. And uh, the main uh, technology areas here is 5G small cell software design, especially for main layer, RSC, PDCP, and so forth. And what we are considering uh, as a frequency band and below six and above six are used. And also our 5G small cell uh, special features here, we are designing uh, software stacks, RRM, MET, scheduler, beam forming in commercial level. And also as a conceptual model, we apply functional split and open a a API. Uh, for product, now we have developed uh, LTE small cell software uh, based on LTE Pro uh, specification, DIL 13, and uh, duplex FDD and TDD both, and evolved Peki Core emulator as well. And in future, as I mentioned, uh, we are going to uh, design the software based on little 15 and 16, so called uh, 5G NR small cell software. This is the uh, product, the ongoing and in the future here. So, so far we have developed LT Advanced Pro Small Cell Software and EPC Emulator and Portable LT Small Cell. For example, a, a Portable LT Small Cell uh, can be applied for public safety, more, uh, military area, a stadium with high density and covers the whole area like islands, something like that. And in the future, the 5G NR small cell software and 5G core emulator will be developed. Actually, it's not will be developed, it's, it's the development is on the way right now. Here is the use cases. There's small cell softwares, I mean, small cell development will be applied in these use cases. The first use case, the all-in-one 5G small cell and in-building 5G solution and 5G portable cell. So right-hand side is this a figure for several use cases. And second one is cellular-based uh, industry IoT. We call it IIoT. So this uh, project uh, tried to make the factory uh, smarter than right now. Actually, smart factory project is one of the representative vertical domains for 5G and characterized by integration of the IoT and related services in the in industrial manufacturing. And this technology mostly uh, considered uh, URLC and MMTC. These are the uh, key enablers for cellular-based industrial IoT application. Uh, product. So right now, what we are doing so far, uh, we have uh, developed with the enhanced URLC and MMTC technology. As you can see, uh, the axis, three axes here, uh, each axis represent the uh, requirement, the technical requirement. So if it's longer, then the requirement is uh, much tighter and tighter. So with the you know, current you know, 5G requirement, uh, some area cannot be you know, uh, balanced with that uh, requirements. That's why we have to make the requirements much uh, uh, tighter and tighter. And with those requirements, we have developed the system. So the developed system was uh, demonstrated in a, a single factory environment uh, below figure, 5G-based industry IoT POC, proof of concept. And in the future, uh, we think uh, in the future, uh, like you know, massive URLC technology, this is you know, massive, uh, MMTC plus URLC is merged together and there will be some kind of new requirement. 
So we call it advanced URLS technology. So those are the, you know, uh, those requirements are based on the, you know, surveys uh, from other, you know, various kinds of, you know, factories requirement. So uh, the requirements somewhere in this, you know, three dimensional area. So with that requirement, we also developed the uh, system and that will be, you know, uh, demonstrated in a multi-factory environment. This is the use case. We can uh, separate uh, short-term future and long-term future. As you can see for short term right now, we are considering in 5G mobile robot and head, 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 uh, human machine interface and portable control panel, remote control, something like that. And in the, in the end, long term, uh, we are expecting there is no wire, wire cable in the factory. That's the you know, ultimate goal of this project. Uh, third one is the MMA moving network. So here, uh, this project tried to support GigaBPS level wireless data for public transportation, uh, providing Giga Wi-Fi service in, in bus. So simply speaking, uh, let's, let's provide you know, high data rate, even the UE on board, like bus or train. That's the you know, uh, targeting, target of this project. So Giga, Giga BPS level moving wireless backhaul technology is important. For it in detail, in, when it comes to um, technology area, uh, million to way based P2P, point to point, and point multipoint multi point moving wire spec hole, and radio transmission technology optimized for high speed, and how we can you know, manage uh, fast beam switching and faster, faster uh, handover technology, and relaying technology to overcome non line of sight environment. So, uh, those are the, uh, those are the you know, technology uh, areas. Uh, we are focusing on this in this project. Uh, here, uh, the first ongoing, actually the, we have already demonstrated this, uh, uh, this concept uh, in a, a Seoul subway line number eight, uh, two years ago. And this year also we are preparing with new uh, approval concept uh, in this environment as well. And uh, in the future, P2MP, like you know, uh, normal uh, vehicle environment, car environment, will be targeting, and those will be demonstrated in the future. Use cases, you can uh, refer to this slide. What would be the use cases in this project? Uh, open five D DU. DU means uh, distributed unit. So here, if you see this this slide, it says. Open 5G distributed unit technology. Uh, as I mentioned, DU is distributed unit, a dynamic function split based open 5G GNODB uh, DU technology to support various function splits and to, to fill a coverage hole efficiently along with higher spectrum efficiency. And technology areas here, we can uh, separate two parts. One is open 5G genome DU supporting flexible function split. And second one is extended DU supporting integrated access backhaul, which is now under underway in 3GPP standardization. We call it IAB, integrated access and backhaul. So this is you know, ongoing and in the future. As I mentioned, ongoing is 5G NRTU link level simulator for research aspect and open 5G DU hardware and software platform for POC and open 5G standardization as well. So throughout this you know, project, if there is some items to be standardized, standardized and then we uh, uh, go, go to uh, standard uh, 3GPP and uh, put the idea into the specification. That's also one of our efforts in this project. In the future, as I mentioned, DU and right hand side is you know IAB type hardware configuration. We call it extended DU structure. Here is the use cases. As you can imagine, uh, there are a lot of you know distributed unit in the future. So how we can manage those? And in this project, uh, mostly uh, focusing on the you know the design of DU and IAB. And in third, third one, other case, 
cases in this case, you know, satellite also, you know, included here and the, you know, network environment is uh, changed by considering satellite EU, how we can, you know, uh, include uh, this satellite. That's one of, you know, use case in the future. This is the uh, MMA backhaul technology. So try to design a uh, wireless backhaul network. So this is, you know, uh, fixed uh, ne uh, network. Here we applied uh, 70 uh, gigahertz and 80 gigahertz E-band. So why spectral technology for 5G uh, mobile communication network uh, by providing uh, peak data rate 25 gigabps based on MM wave technology. And here, uh, what is the uh, technology areas is a uh, high speed data transmission, uh, broadband FDD and high order modulation and MIMO, high speed channel coding, all you know, technology are designed specified uh, in Atri uh, for designing this you know hardware. And product uh, MMA P2P backhaul hub and terminal uh, with the uh, peak data rate at 20, 25 gigahertz, gigabps and millimeter wave P2MP uh, backhaul hub as well and terminal with the same uh, peak data rate. So this is ongoing. As I mentioned, to design the uh, hardware, we have specified all the required uh, uh, technology uh, for MMA P2P backhaul. And in the future, MMA P2P backhaul hub and terminal, MMA P2MP backhaul hub terminal. So the uh, feature, the, the how can I say, uh, the technology here, we have applied even here. So that's why we try to uh, make this some echo environment with SME in Korea. This is one of you know uh, goal uh, to to generate this project. This is the use cases. So please refer to uh, this slide. So from now on, uh, so far I have explained about you know five G related project. But here, I'm going to explain about uh, after 5G, but nobody cannot, can define yet. But uh, just here, I saying, you know, beyond 5G is very much related to 5G plus or 6G. Uh, first of all, in terms of services, uh, what would be next in 6G? As you can see in this figure, in this slide, uh, in 6G, all, set, all senses, 4D and hologram. The key technology here for 6 media, 6 degree of freedom, uh, free navigation, immersive media, and digital hologram object, and low latency tactile information uh, communication. And for real-time interactive hyper-realistic services, we need to minimize the end-to-end -end delay, not only for wireless delay, but also wire delay, wire delay. So in this uh, slide uh, shows that uh, we must uh, reduce the latency, uh, especially in the wired, uh, wired side. So for example, to transfer information uh, across the nation or you know, across worldwide. Uh, this is the you know hot topic for 6G right now. Terra has uh, wireless communication. So one of the uh, big di biggest difference uh, in 5G compared to a uh, previous generation. In 5G, millimeter wave have applied. That's the uh, very uh, different feature uh, in 5G uh, specification, 5G area generation. So likewise, in 6G. Uh, most of you know uh, alliance or some forum or countries they are uh, mostly focusing on uh, telehealth uh, event. So this is one of you know hot topic for 6G. So for doing that, uh, mostly we must figure it out what would happen in the you know wireless environment by applying the telehealth band. So that's why we have to use a uh, channel sounder to, to measure, to get to understand the you know, characteristics of the environment of the uh, terahertz band. Uh, for that, uh, that would be, you know, after that, 
and then and you know run technology like new wave and channel coding and modulation and how to synchronize and how to signaling those you know new rad technology will be you know developed so this slide shows you know those kind of you know technology uh, based based you know required one uh, to do design the wireless transport network a radio transport network for run aimed to expand coverage of course you know millimeter wave so far has a big hurdle how to extend the coverage right so likewise if we you know go higher area uh, more than you know millimeter wave band still we we have a hurdle like you know coverage issue and how to minimize the shadowing area that that's you know key you know uh topics to overcome in this you know research top in, the, in this area so expanding in run coverage wireless spec core and mid or front or self pack core uh, multi hub relay and moving back core this is the you know this this figure shows the you know some uh uh areas fields uh, to cover uh, in this you know terahertz wireless communication uh, network this is the ultra uh, dense network. So as you can imagine, the frequency is getting more higher and higher. And if the higher frequency are deployed in our environment, there are a lot of pastoral shadowing, those you know, problems must be overcome. Then one, is, one of the simplest way, we deploy a lot. So you know, more than uh, UEs, there are, you know, there are you know, transmitting point more than UEs. In that environment, what could happen? Like, you know, uh, for example, interference environment, how we can uh, handle, address those interference. So this project is targeting uh, to solve uh, those, those, you know, uh, drawbacks in this kind of environment. So key features of UDN, uh, more access node than active use as I mentioned and severe interference from a large number of access nodes and high cost to implement, right? Because we have to deploy a lot of transmission point it directly, you know, uh, connected to the price cost. That's why how we can, you know, reduce and also energy consumption as well. Uh, this is the, you know, how we can combine, uh, you know, AI technology into uh, existing you know run and code technology so uh, as you know uh, ai is very hot topic uh, these days any any fields how we can apply ai to this you know environment for example wireless transmission technology area wireless networking area wireless edge area because getting you know complex and complex so that's why you know we have to um uh deal with you know ai technology apply ai technology into our our existing you know uh, technology this is, is the end of you know uh, a figure in the in the you know future after applying uh, ai technology so here like you know uh, connection limit multiple access uh, interference management mimo multi point transmission and QA guaranteed scheduling, UDN radio, our resource management, those you know, areas, if AI apply, then I, I think and I hope you know, much efficient and if, if you can, uh, efficient, effective you know, solution will come out. This is the uh, uh, non-terrestrial network. Uh, in 3GPP, this is also has been uh, performed for standardization. Uh, so far, there is no specification yet. Probably NTN specification will come out uh, from release uh, 17. Uh, expected, uh, I think, you know, around 2022. Yeah. So if we uh, combine uh, Leo uh, satellite here, the network configuration is changing, and there are a lot of connections here. How we can efficiently use satellite. Uh, combined with you know existing you know a radio access network environment, this is the issue that we are also uh, focusing on. 
Uh, lastly, uh, this one is the you know wireless network with aerial uh, vehicles. Likewise, you know uh, satellite. We can also uh, consider HAPS or these kind of drones or airplane, helicopter, whatever. And especially this kind of this kind of network will be uh, used in a lack of infra environment or no infra environment or digester environment. So considering three different different application, we are also you know developing uh, some idea and doing some research on this topic. This is the last uh, three uh, global collaboration information. The first one is uh, Korea and EU. Uh, this you know global collaboration project uh, have developed development have a goal main goal have, have main goal development of services and technology for the interoperation between 5G cellular and satellite uh, development of intercontinent interoperability test as you can see the figure in the right hand side and you can see participants uh, Korea side ATRI is the reading organization and EU. Uh, you side the CRLD uh, from France is the uh, leading uh, organization. We do the uh, uh, R&D uh, and also uh, do the some in, uh, intercontinent interoperability tests. And also we are uh, doing right now uh, Korea and UK. Uh, we have very strong in high speed infra environment. And e, uh, UK has very strong point for uh, software, software development. So we try to combine those technologies in high speed train environment. So the goal of this project also R&D in high speed train environment and run aspect and proof of concept in Seoul metro environment, line number eight. That uh, demonstration will be performed this year. So we are preparing for the uh, demonstration right now. And here participants from Korea side is uh, a three is a leading organization. EU is Cisco UK. You can see the you know, overall configuration of this uh, project, what we're uh, planning to. Uh, third one is uh, Korea and Finland. This global collaboration targeting for 6G as you know, uh, Finland Oulu University has already started uh, 6G uh, research. Uh, they had they you know organized uh, 6G Genesis. So uh, with that group, we have started the collaboration uh, research. The goal of this project also key technology development on 5G plus URLSC. Mostly this project focusing on URLS aspect and demonstration on IIoT remote control service across con continent. So for example, you know, I'm here in South Korea. The factory is located in uh, Finland. I would like to control the you know, machine uh, uh, over there in Finland. Then there must be some latency issue. So considering those latency, how we can you know, reduce the latency and what kind of you know, technical uh, others to be overcome, so we have to figure it out. The issues; those are the you know uh, uh, items that we are addressing in this project. Okay, thank you. This is all about my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Lee, for your time and great comment. Uh, comment. If there are any questions, please let us know over our Q&A box. The questions will be answered after the event and sent to you via email. We will see you again in a few moments in our discussion round, and are looking forward to hearing more from you.
We will now start our discussion session or podium discussion, how you call it. I'm pleased to personally introduce to you Dr. Engine of Engineering, Mr. Christian Moos, who is standing right next to me. And he will take over the moderation for this special program now. Hello, Dr. Moos. It's a pleasure to have you here. Hey, Mr. Zagorowski, it's great to be here. <clears throat> and I think it's an absolutely good idea to bring together Kotra and um, uh, WDE in a, a position um, what talks about markets, what talks about technology, and got um, good experts um, uh, in the podium discussion just to find out um, how this market will moving, how this technology will be. And thanks a lot um, for the organization and um, for Mrs. Weber. She um, helped you uh, with this. It's a real great event. Yes, that's absolutely true. And I'm pretty sure we will have a bright future together and can take over much more projects like this. And also on this uh, event, I will wish you uh, good success. And you may start now. OK. Thank you very much. OK. No, I, I can um, sit down and uh, relax a little bit. And um, I would like to introduce my guests today. That's Mr. Ork, um, who already um, had a speech um, in the morning. Mr. Ork, um, I welcome you from my side here, from my moderation uh, way. And um, I'm very convinced that um, KT gets a lot of technology um, where um, uh, the German market um, is very interested uh, to hear about. Dr. Lee, you um, had your speech just a couple of minutes ago, and I found it very interesting um, to find out um, what the research work um, in Korea um, means. And we will discuss about this um, in the um, next hour. And uh, that will be very interesting um, to bring our positions uh, together. And this position um, is just a campaign uh, by Michael Bobkowski um, from uh, Gamalu. Um, he's a market expert, um, uh, he's a sales guy, and um, he will um, give us ideas on what kind of products uh, we can expect in this uh, market and what kind of technology um, uh, development um, uh, can be uh, seen in the future. And when we talk about technology and um, uh, looking in the, um, the German direction, I'm so glad um, to have you here, Professor Fitze, um, from the um, TU Dresden. Uh, you're coordinating the 5G lab. And um, I think um, uh, it's right to say that you're one of the brains um, here in Germany um, uh, regarding uh, the topic of 5G. And what makes us very proud um, from the WDE side is um, that we got um, uh, this um, conference, um, the European Wireless, uh, which is um, headed by you um, uh, as chair of this um, conference. And that's Information Technology Society, um, which is represented by me um, today. It's a great pleasure to have you here. And last but least, there's Carsten Pino, um, a colleague um, from Bowie. He's a, a Team, um, chairman of the VDE um, Berlin Brandenburg, and um, he's an expert uh, in the direction of IT security and um, all those um, things, technology, um, if we um, are looking in the direction of um, industrial um, IoT and um, uh, things like this. I don't want um, uh, to borrow you, so um, I, I give you um, just a short um, introduction in, in what we in Germany um, are saying about 5G. You know, um, this technology was paved um, by the German Federal Network Agency, what we call Bundesnetzagentur, where we um, auction off the frequency for the 5G uh, real-time mobile radio. This technology is intended to achieve more than um, just um, faster mobile um, internet. It shall make completely new applications possible. Behind this is the power of 5G, the fifth generation of mobile communication technology, hence the number of the name, will for the first time enable data transmission in near real time. A universal translator in the ear of the power of high performance computers in your pocket. All this is to be made possible thanks to the low latency of 5G. However, it will take years 
and billions of dollars to develop the technology. Exactly how much nobody wants to commit to. A rise for technology has developed worldwide, above all China, South Korea, Japan, but also the US. They have declared 5G to be a central technology for the economy of the future. The German government has set the goal for Germany to become the lead market for 5G. At the same time, various companies are struggling for technological leadership in 5G. And there's a point where I'm really glad um, uh, to um, speak here with Kotra um, uh, for um, the representatives um, of um, South Korea, because um, I read it in the Handelsblatt, South Korea's um, use the crisis to become a digital powerhouse. President Moon strengthens South Korea's competitiveness. He has made a promise um, to his nation, to your nation. With South Korea's containment of the coronavirus behind, he wants to finally build the country into a leading high-tech nation. Uh, he said, our goal goes beyond the global Republic of Korea is Republic of Korea will take the lead in the world. You see, South Korea, I am um, just talked about the position of Germany, so it will be very interesting today. And that's the point where I would like um, to give the word to Professor Fitzek. His talk will be communication should take place in real time in the future. Professor Fitzek, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. I will just share my screen. So I hope you can see my screen right now. Maybe one positive hands up if you can see it. Yes, yes. Um, it's, it's wonderful. Nice. So um, I just stick to the title that I was given. And um, thank you for the very um, insightful um, talks that we had before. There were a lot of things that I share. Um, we talk about 5G since a long time. We also um, facing the discussion of 6G, just to put it out there in the beginning. I'm not a big fan of just labeling something that I'm doing 6G um, without having any content, right? Um, I think what all people um, having in common when they talk about 6G is they don't have any content whatsoever. But um, I would make my point why 5G is the, mo the uh, most important enabler for the digital transfer in the future. So um, just to show you a little bit what um, we have done here in Dresden, I'm here in Dresden since six years. I was 11 years in Denmark before that. And when I took over the chair, we um, started in 2014, the 5G Lab Germany, which had a leading role, I would say, worldwide, because it was not just a new cellular communication system with higher data rate. It also showed that we have to look at latency. Real-time communication was the enabler that we thought had a, a lot of things to do with our customers. And I think after a short while, everybody um, followed that idea. And um, I think if you now look at the triangle that was introduced by my colleague um, some slides before, um, the triangle with multimedia and uh, massive sensoric can also be given on a 4G network, right? You have um, narrowband IoT, you have higher data rates if you get the spectrum. But low latency is maybe the key feature of 5G that 4G cannot because of the design and the protocol structure and the framing cannot be achieved. What you see here is a bunch of um, uh, projects we had. I will come back to this in a moment. Um, also our colleagues from Korea, they showed what kind of projects they have. I think we have similar ideas there. What we are doing now with 5G, we are moving away from machine to machine type to communication to something that we call human to machine or machine to human communication, where we also got um, two years ago um, an um, um, Center for Excellence here in Germany, um, which is a very prestigious project with 50 million looking into the tactile internet, where really the new senses like haptic tactile play a way bigger role than just um, uh, real-time communication for audio and video. 
Now, we also had some other activities, something like um, Center for Explainable and Energy Efficient AI. We also um, had something in new architectures like campus networks, and also a lot of things about robotics in medical um, things, which is the Kröner Fresenius Stiftung. Not just the projects is important for us. We do also a lot of um, startups. These are um, four startups out of uh, my chair in the last um, five years. Um, Wandelbots, for example, is a startup that is taking um, 5G communication to um, create the Internet of Skills, democratizing the capability to um, program robots just by showing by a human what you can do. Demonstrating your skills is enough for a robot to learn. You don't need to program actually. And there are other um, startups. I think this is something how we push our innovation into the market. So um, the most thing is what is 5G? And I will go through it um, very quickly because you have done it. Um, I think you gave um, a splendid explanation what will happen on the so-called link level. So everything, physical layer, antenna design, modulation, um, frequencies. For my um, expectation, what communication system, um, how they are changing, then you see the, the revolution from telephone networks to the internet and the internet towards what we have now, a computing network. So it was circuit switched, packet switched, and this is computing um, oriented um, communication where you somehow um, enable the network to be smart. We had a smart communication network already with the telephone networks, but we made them dumb to be resilient because resilience is one of the um, int most interesting features of a communication network. But to have both of them, you need to do something where you bring computing into the, the, into the network. Now, um, if you know, look into the different Gs, um, I think 5G is um, different from the others because we are not solely targeting the consumers, we are really um, targeting the communication with things. Therefore, we need real-time communication for the Internet of Things. Interesting is also the bundling with the um, wired world. It's not just a cellular system that gets stuck to the internet. There are a lot of um, ideas floating around in the standardization entities like 3GPP and ITF and um, how they combine their ideas where SDN NFV comes from IETF, where um, the spectrum and um, the um, spectrum definitions come from the 3GPP, right? Now they talk together, it's quite interesting. Um, if you look what they are doing and what their kind of um, update rate is, you know, we have this 10 rate a year's update with the cellular system, but the ITF will say we update every day, right? And the reason for that is um, the wired world was always driven by software. The seller world is always driven by, by hardware so far, right? This we are now changing with a holistic view of 5G where software plays a bigger role. Hardware, I made it a little bit smaller. Um, be kind with me. Maybe you will think it's a little bit bigger. I would, would not care about it. We can discuss it. But hardware for me is only important for RF baseband, for antenna design, for energy efficient computing and so on. Software will play a major role in the future. Now, this computing and communication, that's really what makes us different, right? Where the whole world will change, where you really can bring new applications into the network. So this is what we are focusing on. So when you want to differentiate the different generation, so far communication was just purely um, transportation of bits of, over an agnostic pipe. Now with 5G communication becomes more, right? It's transport still, but also um, storage and computing and um, processing of data. If you look at the um, 5G, you already introduced the triangle. We always um, explain 5G by an atom where the core of um, the atom are the use cases. And um, you have named a lot of them here at the um, 5G lab. We have um, a lot of industrial partners, whether they are from car manufacturers, uh, Bosch or from agriculture. All of these use cases that you see here are important for us. Even here, what you see, energy grids, how you can form energy grids, control them, form them, split them. That is an, uh, a real test bed that we have. We have a, a bunch of um, real life test beds for energy, for uh, transportation, cars on the highway, um, construction sites, or even ag agriculture. So um, this is something where we're really good at. And there's a bunch of um, projects that we have currently. You can see some of them here. Um, for different um, use cases, 
all of the projects are around 10 to 20 million projects together with industry and other research centers here in Germany. We are really lucky from the German government to be supported in this 5G activities. And currently we are thinking about naming it 6G. As I said, not a big fan of that, but important that we continue this kind of research. Now, what 5G makes so interesting, and I think that we, you all already addressed this, is that it, it's a wheel, a small wheel spinning other wheels that in the end spins the big wheel of digital transfer. So when you go back to the single um, use cases, you can take an analog process and just bring it in the digital world, right? But this is not what I'm, really interested in. Interesting it becomes if you have different fields and combine them in a new way, right? I give you a quick update. So if you just have a car, a car can transport goods and um, also people, but it will also transport batteries or base stations, right? So here you are transforming three different use cases into one. And this is what um, the digital transfer really defines. Now, as I said, we have this 5G atom when you have a core, you have electrons in these tiers. Um, I think uh, what I would like to talk about is um, not throughput and energy and resilience and security. Latency was given uh, to me as a title. So um, I've seen already um, some of you talking about this three-dimensional problem of, hey, what is if I have latency and throughput and resilience, how can I do it? Latency per se is a problem, right? And when we talk about what is uh, latency? We always said in the beginning of um, our 5G lab, we need one millisecond. People were a little bit um, astonished. Some of them were laughing about the one millisecond. In 3GPP, we are already talking about sub milliseconds now. And why is this important? Um, here's a, um, a video from a colleague of mine. It's an, um, an haptic joystick. You see, if you have a little bit of latency in the network, um, the haptic joystick will still work. If you feedback, haptic feedback, as soon as you get 10 millisecond latency, you're doomed. This is specific to this cyber physical system. Other systems could um, be instable with 20 milliseconds. Other will be already become instable with three milliseconds. Now, even humans um, are suffering by latency. What we do here is a Samsung gear that um, just um, is changing the um, reality by 40 milliseconds, um, which is LTE delays, showing that 4G would never be enough to, um, to deal in virtual or augmented realities, right? So humans have different um, latency requirements. In video, it's 15 milliseconds. In audio, three milliseconds. But in tactile haptic communication, we need one, this one millisecond for the human beings. Otherwise, they would not feel um, um, in the real world. Now. What's really interesting, and that is also what one of the Koreans colleagues said, what is if you want to combine it, latency and throughput? And there's a clear trade-off. You cannot optimize for throughput and latency at the same time. Now, if you even want to optimize for resilience, throughput and latency, if you go classical information theory, you will always can um, optimize for one, but not for three of them at the same time. Therefore, I think for, um, for our new um, networks, we need um, new information theoretical approaches. It's very important because otherwise we will not crack the, um, the problem of this um, trade-off. And we are working here a lot in post channel theory. We look, work on compressed sensing and especially on network coding. What you can see in the, in the top, the plot shows you if you have stop and wait or selective repeat or other block codes, you will always have a clear linear um, trade-off between throughput and delay. If you want to break, break this, network coding, these are the crosses up here, they really can optimize for all three at the same time. But there's where 5G so far did not did a good job in standardization. We did not dare to come up with new information theoretical approaches. Now, a little bit of outlook, and um, I totally much in line with um, what I heard before. Um, as I said, the first generations in cellular were um, targeting humans for consumer stuff. Then we go to mobility for machines, cars, and drones. But some of the stuff, we don't need mobility, right? We, um, as I said before, we have this 5G campus networks where we can um, enable um, communication with machines, but even humans and machines with these so-called campus networks. So this is the current situation. We had released 15 in the rollout. Um, we have campus networks. If you don't know what it is, um, here in Germany, what we do is we have 
these kind of boxes. We have 5G in it, a standalone 5G core and radio access, where we can bring 5G to a countryside or to a company to secure the um, digital sovereignty of the, of the company. And this we are doing for small companies like bakeries, but big uh, companies like Porsche or Audi, where we bring them their own technology. Um, this is, for example, an example how we uh, support people in the bakery, right? Very quick um, example um, how a bakery can be equipped with robots without understanding how to program them. These are different um, uh, photos of the 5G campus container where we really can go around and showcase 5G with our own network. Now, um, of course, the campus network will not be stopped there. Open RAN, you heard about it, will be um, driving the costs. This is interesting for us. There's an evolution path for this. Then you also have to see that Wi-Fi is answering. Um, they are also having Wi-Fi 6 with reservation based, not listen before talk. That might be um, also an interesting point to converge in the open RAN situation, bringing them into the campus solutions. The other re releases that you already um, have seen, 16, um, Qualcomm recently talked about release 20 and whatsoever. There's a clear path how we do this on the cellular path, right? So um, what I also like is the talk about the high altitude platform satellites. We also will talk about open RAN because what we do now is we will develop and have an evolution in the cellular path, but we will talk about new architectures, smaller cells like 5G campus, but bigger cells like the high altitude platforms. And the discussion about architecture, if you want to call this 6G technology, I'm fine with that. But I would not go so far to say we need a new cellular um, communication system because this will only drive away the industry. This makes them nervous and is also not a good term because once you do everything in software, you don't need another generation. That the internet has shown, right? The internet has no generation once they turn into, um, into software. Now, what is also important for us is a little bit of quantum communication. Quantum communication will be an enabler for synchronization of the cellular networks, can be used for satellite links, can be also used in the campus situation. There's something that we are currently investigating and trying to co um, converge them into our networks. With that, um, we also used our corona situation to write some books about it. One is really in the middle, the comp computing and the communication networks. And the other one is the tactile internet, where we really show that you need new networks to support tactile communication. And last but not least, what I mentioned before, quantum communication networks, where you can use the resources of uh, quantum entanglement. I know that I um, did a little bit more time than I should, but I hope this finds your interest. Thank you very much. Okay, this is Safi Zek, and it was a great pleasure to be with you and uh, get on the journey of um, what can be with 5G and what follows up. I think um, uh, your statement, transport, storage, processing, computing, and um, combining different fields, that will give um, a lot of place for discussions and um, uh, developments. Um, I, I will come back to this later. Now, I thank you very much for your talk, and please stay in the line and... I now would like to introduce um, uh, my next guest. That's uh, Carsten Pino. Uh, as I mentioned, um, a colleague um, of um, Berlin. VDE Berlin um, is um, a very um, interesting spot um, for us because um, all the story um, of um, electrical engineering with Werner von Siemens just started there 140 years ago. And um, uh, the association, uh, which is combined um, with its activities at the ETB, um, we are the VDE, and um, uh, Carsten is one of the representatives. But more than this, he's a book author, journalist, and lecturer um, at the HTV um, Boeing, and um, he's an um, expert um, for safety. Um, he's the head of the safety working group of VDI and VDE. And um, so I would um, ask you, um, Carsten, um, today, um, especially um, two points. First one, I would like to know what should we do to make 5G networks secure? And the second one is um, which role plays norms and standards in that way? And maybe um, you just give us a couple of minutes um, to talk about, talk about those points. Okay, Christian, thank you very much for the for your friendly introduction. 
the question, first question was, what should we do to make 5G networks secure? And before we answer this question, we have to take a short look on the challenges, uh, on the security challenges of 5G. And there, these challenges are threefold. This is uh, first, the complexity of the standards. It's uh, hard uh, to implement the security standards in a secure way. Second, the backward compatibility is a problem. Attackers may be able to force 5G systems to use more vulnerable 5G, 4G protocols, sorry, uh, for example. And third, the optional security features is one of the problems. Many of the new features, many of the new security features are optional and network operators can choose to implement them or even not. So uh, this is what uh, we have to keep in mind if we want to answer the question. So we come to the conclusion. Uh, I have found out three points which uh, are very important to uh, make 5G networks secure. This is first, the proper implementation of security features. Uh, it is second, the further development of standards and norms. Uh, and as said by Professor Fitzek, uh, this is no uh, generation, it is an uh, evolving uh, process. And third, and last but not least, uh, we have to keep in mind that security is a process rather than a product. So this is my short uh, overview over the secure things. This is a very uh, large uh, um, uh, topic uh, to handle about, but it's just a few impressions what we have to care about. We will come to the second question, Christian, which may uh, role play norms and standards. Um, well, I think it is uh, a necessary uh, precondition uh, for, and I found out uh, also three points, which is very important from my point of view. It is the interoperability of 5G mobile networks, which is made uh, by standards, which is made possible by standards, is the usage of frequency bands, which is important. Uh, and as a third, uh, we come back to my topic before, the implementation, the proper implementation of security features. That's from my point of view, so we get a little bit more time for the discussion afterwards. Christian? Oh, excuse me. Um, that's a kind of um, standard what we feel here. Um, just um, to come to the points um, you mentioned, Carsten, um, thank you very much for this. And um, I guess that's the point interoperability and um, the proper implementation and the complexity of standards. That, that's really um, one point we should keep in mind and um, follow up. And um, that gives me a chance um, uh, to come to my next guest, Michael Bobkowski, um, Head of Overseas Sales at uh, Gamma Nu. And Michael, I would be really interested um, about that um, infrastructure things. You, I got um, two questions for you, if you like to answer them. First one is, how will uh, 5G antennas get built in cities and regions. So the doing how, I'm very interested. What are we doing and how um, um, does it work? And the second one is, what is the 5G situation in Korea? Because I'm really impressed about all that, um, what's um, happening and going on there. And maybe um, we in Germany can learn a little bit about this. So the stage is yours for these um, two questions, please. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, too, I'd like to thank uh, Kotra for organizing this uh, great meeting. And as the only sales guy on the panel, I would like to also introduce our company, as I already have. And we welcome the opportunity to sell our product to any interested people and end users that are in this program now. Uh, what I would like to do is throw up actually a slide from yesterday that I had up, and I think this can uh, identify uh, one particular, and I think we, we saw this in uh, Dr. Lee's Etri presentation, and I think you saw a lot of antenna representations, and the antennas kept getting lower and smaller. 
And I think this is going to be one of the main characteristics we see is antennas getting smaller. This antenna that's in common use in the U.S., it's a hybrid type antenna for LTE and 5G uh, combined. Uh, it's 200 millimeter diameter and 600 millimeter tall. So obviously this antenna will fit on street architecture. Uh, this is the type of antenna that we are seeing deployed now in the U.S. Uh, I'll skip through to the next slide here. Uh, this antenna is the large uh, base station hybrid antenna uh, where you see uh, LTE and uh, uh, coexisting. So there, you know, this is basically that type of antenna. Uh, and this is the way we see it. I mean, I think it's very similar to uh, what we saw in uh, some of the earlier presentations regarding si you know, the size and location of antenna. Uh, so that's, that is our point of view. Okay, Michael, um, thank you very much um, uh, about um, this um, uh, point. Um, what is um, about your um, uh, meaning um, regarding um, antenna technology and um, what um, your company is doing. Um, can you tell me one example um, what you are doing in Korea and what is the situation over there? Um, because, you know, this is one of the points, um, the density of, of antennas in Korea is, is very dense. Uh, can mm -hmm. you talk about this? Please? Well, Korea, yeah, Korea uh, began and is still in a phase where massive BMO is still the dominant characteristic of the uh, of, of the Korean 5G market. So the antenna deployment that is in Korea so far is mainly of the what you would call a uh, one body antenna. So you have the you know radio and uh, the the uh, 32 or 64 uh, TR antennas are joined and interface directly with the radio with the NR. So this is the main characteristic of Korea so far because Korea is such a dense urban, uh, you know, Seoul and many other cities in Korea are so dense and the frequency is in the 3.5 gigahertz range. Uh, they haven't gotten down like some other places like in North America where they're getting down into the 600 megahertz area. So you're, you're really seeing small site, rooftop, high density, uh, massive MIMO is the characteristic in Korea. Okay, thank you very much. Um, later on, we will come a little bit in the discussion. Now I would uh, like to come to the next point. Uh, Dr. Lee, I would be very interested, um, what is your opinion um, about um, how will 5G reality tomorrow look like? So what is your research work? Where, in what direction are we going when we are talking about technologies and um, future technologies? Okay, okay. Uh, to answer your question, actually, uh, actually have envisioned the future society uh, targeting for 2035. So I bring here the video clip, three minutes video clips that what we are thinking about. So. Could you enjoy the video clip right now? Okay, I will. Yes, um, play the video clip. Mrs. Weber um, will um, do this. I think singing is much better than wording. That's why I prepared for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite convinced. Thank you very much. Please, please hold on a, a little moment, mm. please. Uh, well, um, I, I think uh, we need um, a, a minute um, just to um, do the technology. Uh, so um, if we use the time in between, uh, if 
if that is okay for you, I would um, uh, talk with you um, with one um, a special thing where I'm very interested in, um, that's the health environment. Um, do you think um, that 5G will be, um, uh, bring something like the reality change um, in the hospitals, that what we call blue hospitals and green hospitals here in Germany? Uh, yeah, actually, you know, I have investigated some information about, you know, blue hospital in Korea, but so far, uh, I, we cannot uh, find such kind of information yet, but, you know, I'm sure there will be kind of movement in Korea as well. So every, you know, industry, like, you know, a uh, hospital industry or, you know, factory industry, those industries will be, you know, reformed with 5G and then they reborn with the, you know, 5G, I think. Okay, um, uh, from the um, regie, um, I hear now um, your video clip is prepared. So we yep. were Bye. very interesting um, uh, to see what you want to show us. Needs a second. That's why we must solve the latest issue in wild case. Uh, I think we are facing a little bit of some technical audio issues. Maybe, Ms. Ali, you can say a few words to the video. Um... Okay, it's uh, just, you know, uh, envisioning the future uh, things. For example, I, I think, you know, two, two, two you know, children are walking down on the street. They just about to uh, get some accident. The mom was, at the time, was, you know, doing some work but she got some signals uh, from there, but she was at the office. She cannot directly go to the place. That's why uh, she sent some, you know, AI kind of, you know, artificial uh, images there to console their, you know, uh, children to uh, slow down. So yeah, that was, you know, uh, image that was shown just before. And right now she is heading for the home and while inside the car, she is enjoying yoga or something like that. And the, around the drone is flying over there. And the child is, you know, uh, studying. With VR, AR. And the mom, instead of a mom, the robot is cooking for a family. I'm sure she would be happy. Very sorry, it's three minutes of video clip, but there's a, some a technical issue. Uh, like no, 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 Dr. Lee, um, that's, that's wonderful because um, it only um, shows us um, that technology is not only the only thing where we are on. Thank you for your understanding. By the way, I also have prepared one you know, brochure for this. So I'm going to distribute the brochure to the audience in the end. Yeah, this is a good idea. And um, I, I think um, when we see what uh, Professor Fitzek um, asked, so, um, all that literature, all your work um, is very worthful. And um, it's our job um, just uh, to combine people and um, technology and knowledge um, that's what I really am um, proud um, to get that here. And what, what you did, um, I, I think two very interesting points um, with your presentation. One point is 5G is something what is very interesting for life, for people, for consumer markets. Well, that's um, what um, we call the, a good way of life. And uh, I'm really convinced that education and all the things what you are doing that it's really helpful um, to um, get a better world. 
And the second point, uh, it's, it's a really funny, um, uh, today we will um, uh, talk about uh, um, IFR um, results, um, um, that's a kind of press release um, about the uh, um, situation in the world of robotics that will today be at one o'clock um, uh, organized by VDMA and um, the Munich Fair. And so I see it's so dense, it's so um, uh, actual what you're talking about. Thank you very much for this. Thank you. Um, now I come back to um, Professor Fitze. Um, I got a question for you. Uh, you already mentioned this, um, you know, that um, talking um, what comes um, after 5G. But what I'm more interested in um, is how can we strengthen 5G? What is the main idea to bring it to the market? What can we do to drive this horse? Um, I think that 5G as a standalone technology is not enough. So if you just bring it there to the people and say, here's 5G, they sometimes don't know what it is. It's the same for AI or machine learning. Uh, there are a lot of programs in Germany bringing AI to the um, existing companies, but they don't know what it is. They don't even know what they can do with 5G. So it's very important that we have also a discussion not with the big industry, they know exactly what to do with that, but also with these small medium enterprises to tell them what 5G can do for them. And it's not just that you tell it for them, they need some intermediate technology to make it um, usable for them. So for example, the guy in the bakery, he has a very old Nokia phone um, with four digits, which means um, not even a smartphone, this is a featured phone. He is not really aware of what digital transform means. So you have to bring um, cust the um, customized solution to the people and say, this is what uh, will do the things for you. Therefore, even the fear in the population, what 5G is doing or whatever, it's not good enough because it's just a, a technology for communication. But what it really can do, that's important that we have to do. So that is what we do with our startups really bringing solution to the end customer using 5G. It's not 5G, the product. It's something beyond 5G, which is the technology that you have to, to bring to the people. Professor Fitzek, thank you very much. And I think that's a very, very important point. Um, the startups, the education, the universities, and the normal people outside there, in the factories, in the urban cities, and so on. My next question, therefore, um, uh, I will start with you, Professor Fitzek, is um, once again coming back to norms and standardizations. I would be interested in whether that what we are talking about um, is norms and standardization, is it a break or is it a driver? Can you repeat the question? So is uh, it yes. I would like um, whether norms and standardizations. Ah, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. I, now I got it. So um, standardization, of course, is important, right? Um, in the beginning, it was important that I can use my phone, go to Spain in holidays or go to Korea on Jeju Island and I still have my phone with me and I can talk there. But um, it will be still important to have a global market on, on uh, drones or whatever that they have the same technology. but. With the softwareization that we are facing currently, there's also less need um, of standardization because um, we, we have the possibility to make logical networks with network slicing. And whatever technology we are doing in the slice, within the slice, we don't need a standard. So on the one end, we still have to um, make sure that we have the same, especially in hardware, the same technology view. But in software, it's not needed anymore that we have a worldwide standard. We can have dedicated solutions. Okay, um, that's interesting. I, I play the ball and now to Carsten. What do you think? Don't we need um, standardization in software? 
Yes, we, we, we need uh, standards, but I agree with uh, Professor Fitzek. Uh, we had, have to have uh, standardization for the very important things, but we have also have freedom in the, what he called the slices. You, know, you don't have to standardize what's inside these slices happens. So okay. it is a clear yes and no um, um, uh, at the same time. Um, Dr. Lee, what's about you? You are um, a Provia expert in research. What is your opinion? Well, uh, when I uh, heard the question uh, first time, I thought, you know, when it comes to standard in Korea, uh, we can think about three representative, representative standards, the worldwide and nationwide and SDO or driven standard. So in Korea, we follow the ITU and 3GPP standard for ICT. Why other areas follow the ISO and IEC standard? Lastly, we have case mark for the product certified by Korea Agency for Technology and Standard called CATS. So I think, you know, as you know, software, in terms of software, the uh, two uh, uh, speakers, as mentioned, I think no need. But by the way, uh, standard to consider the echo, especially SMEs to, to, to manufacturing the product, they definitely uh, it is very needed. And then also in, in terms of the you know, communication sense, the between interface, uh, there must be a uh, very you know, important you know, uh, thing for, in terms of standard and norms. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for um, answering this question. Mr. Hook, um, I would um, uh, like to bring you now um, in the position where we all are um, uh, looking for the question, where is the market going to? What trends um, uh, do you see? Um, and what will be the development um, in the um, uh, next couple of months, in the next year? and? What do you think? What is going on? Yeah, uh, I'll speak answer in Korea. So, 그전 발표 자리에서도 말씀드렸지만, 지금 uh, 5G의 일반 개인들을 위한 uh, 이디어 서비스 딜리버리 하는 이제 5G를 어느 정도 안정화되어 있고요. 그 부분에 대해서는 증가는 단계가 있다라고 생각됩니다. 그래서 향후에는 5G가 좀더 아까 말씀드린 호스피라 이런 걸다 포함한 B2B 영역으로 들어가야 되는데 그 부분에 대해서는 어, 저를 포함한 어, 한국에 있는 통신 사업자들은 많은 인더스트리와 이야기를 합니다. 5G의 피처는 이런 것이다 라고 이야기하지만 실제 그걸 써야 될 엔더 유저들은 여전히 어, 그걸 통해서 뭘할수 있을까 라는 그 유스 케이스 이런 부분에 대해서는 약간 이제 어, 뭐라 그럴까요? 아, 시간의 차이가 있는 거죠. 의구심도 있고, 어, 그래서 근데 그런 부분들을 어떻게 어, 해결을 해서 정말 어, 각 인더스트리마다 성공적인 유스 케이스를 만들 것이냐 하는 부분이 최고의 고민이고, 그 부분은 통신 사업자하고 여러 가지 인더스트리와 좀더 긴밀한 커뮤니케이션이 필요할 거라고 봅니다. 네, 이상입니다. 오케이, okay. Mr. Hawk, thank you very much. Um, I guess um, uh, there was a translation, um, so um, uh, people um, uh, got your information. Um, I would um, uh, take the same question um, to you, Michael. Um, what's about your opinion about the market trends? What can we expect? Um, and um, what do you think? Um, is this a story? Um, what can be sold in Europe? Well, I think... Uh... You know, I, the cutting of wires, I think, is, is really one thing that was brought up today by uh, several presenters. And I think that's certainly something that uh, we can expect to see. And, you know, I think the uh, ubiquitousness of antennas, as opposed to even in many cases, fiber to the home, you know, I, I think we will see less emphasis on trying to go to countryside rural areas uh, will no longer have to depend on fiber to the home for their for for their broadband so i think you know uh, just ubiquitous antennas is is really something that uh, we also see okay michael thank you very much for this 
My, my feeling is um, we um, had now in the, um, this discussion a very deep um, insight um, into the um, 5G um, opportunities and um, the things what we um, should um, talk about in the near future. Um, thank you very much, all of you, um, uh, for your statements, um, for your engagement, for this very important point. And now I really appreciate um, getting um, uh, Mr. Zokolowski back again um, in his job as organizer. Um, it was a good um, uh, feeling um, to talk with you and to feel that there's something going on what is very important for all of us. Thank you very much. Mr. Bos, thank you very much for this great moderation and presentation. It was a real pleasure watching you. And of course, also, thank you everybody. Thanks to all the guests and attendees for this that you um, had your time with us today at this special event. As mentioned before, you'll receive a follow-up material and email from us, including every information you need, every documents and everything provided by our guests and speakers. And we will get back to your questions as soon as possible. So now I want to move the attention to our B2B matchmaking session, which will be held at the end of the month. At this uh, this special B2B matchma matchmaking session, you will have the chance to meet exactly the companies you are going to have in your uh, partnership portfolio. So um, we will find exactly what you need, introduce them, and you will have your time in a private talk so you can discuss further plans and further projects. I'm pretty sure this is a very great opportunity to all of us and to all of you, of course. Here will be... Um, we will reach out to you in the following week to introduce you also the other um, fitting companies. So you will have a pre-plan and maybe you can also select a few ones which we already suggest and recommend for you. With this, I want to thank you once more for your interest and the event and your participation for the event. Big thank also to Mr. Groß and a very big thing I would like to have to our co-organizer, Mrs. Leah Weber. Without her, it would not be such an event. Thank you very much. Always, please stay healthy and see you on the next event. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much.